The man of the match was Matt Horne, and uh, Wazi Makram said he thought that his innings, the long innings, the one that took all day, was the one that really gave New Zealand the platform to bowl England out with uh, plenty to spare. And I have won the second. So Hussein will watch from the sidelines. So, into the captaincy breach steps Mark Butcher. A very good evening from today at the test and highlights of the opening salvos of the third uh, Cornhill test match here of the summer at Old Trafford. Much to look forward to, great anticipation because there seems to be so little to choose between these two teams. Mark Butcher named as the 73rd captain of England and he's here with me uh, in the studio. We'll be chatting to him about the day later in the show. The first thing he had to get right, of course, was the toss. He was out there with uh, Stephen Fleming. Well, Fleming got it wrong called incorrectly. Butcher was uh, as delighted as Fleming was disappointed and was able to say that we will bat first. These are the teams announced by the captains. Firstly, England, Michael Atherton back at the top of the order with uh, the new captain Butcher. Alex Stewart at three, Graham Thorpe, Graham Hick recalled, Mark Ramprakesh, Chris Reid, Andrew Caddick, Dean Headley in the side, not Alan Mullally, and two spinners are chosen, Peter Such and Philip Tufnell. Such uh, recalled, he always does well, Such, when he's recalled to the side, uh, that promises for England. Matthew Horne and Matthew Bell will open for New Zealand, as they did at Lord Stephen Fleming, Nathan Astle, Roger Toos, Craig McMillan, Adam Perori, Chris Cairns, Dion Nash, Chris Harris in the side for Jeff Allett. Now there's an interesting move. Harris is uh, a batsman who bowls a bit. They've left out a specialist fast bowler, so that was uh, most interesting. The pitch was cracked and dry. It looked as if it would be slow, and it certainly looked as if it may encourage spinners as the game went on. Unfortunately, we had uh, an hour's delay for rain. We got going at around about uh, midday, which w was good news. At one stage, it didn't look as if we'd get going that early. We're going to pick up play now, right at uh, the start of the piece. It's the second ball of the day. Chris Cairns is bowling to Mark Butcher in the commentary box. Our James Whitaker and Richie Benno. And uh, just a bit of swing. And I don't think Cairns really can complain about that being called four wides. It uh, didn't just go past the wicketkeeper. First one online and not a bad one. Well, Mark Bush has had everything in the first over this morning. That was an absolute beauty from Chris Cairns. A square drive. I'm not certain uh, that's precisely where he intended it. I think he probably was aiming in front of uh, the man at point, but it's flashed away to his uh, right hand side. It's a beautiful delivery. It's just done enough. Not a great deal, but just enough movement off the seam there's another one of those uh, I suppose you can't say that it kept very low but it just didn't get up ah nicely taken very nicely taken for one instant, I reckon he thought uh, the keeper was going to come across to his left. Mark Butcher is gone now. Well, he's only made Mark Butcher play on just a, two or three occasions this morning. But when he has, Mark's looked in trouble. And on that occasion, it's an absolute beauty of a ball. England are now 13 for one. Mark Butcher goes for five. Alex Stewart is the new batsman. More on to the total end. <laughs> Poor Perore. No way in the world he could have got across to that. Oh, beautifully bowled. Good change of length there. He had uh, Atherton hovering on the back foot, round about the crease line. And beat him neck and crop. It's a very, very good oh, maiden over. It's the best over of the morning. Oh, Bounced 
See it? Now that is tough. Here on Nort. You've seen the fellow the other end get one that's hit the bottom of the bat. There's a little rueful smile from Alex Stewart, and that one has leapt on him. Leg buys. Four of them. Confirmed by David Shepherd. So England advanced to 21 for one. And captain, but, uh, not a run scorer today. Round of applause here at Old Trafford. Reached the first runs off the bat for quite some time. 42 balls, in fact. Well, there's an illustration. One's at the bottom, off the edge and gone for four, and that one's got him on the gloves again. In fact, it, uh, it might have got a bit above that even. This has it leapt up. One of those mosaic looking pieces on the pitch. Let's look at the lack of bounce here and the difference in technique. And a little bit of bounce from Dion Nash, but very well short indeed. Well, then, as Alex Stewart finally broken the shackles, it's the big thing, and it appears he has. Genuine leg glance. Cairns perhaps doesn't agree with it. He's not happy about the decision, but Stewart will take them nonetheless. shot of authority absolutely no question about what that came off edge and down it's over time Nathan Astle puts it down it carried low and the heads are down in the New Zealand camp beautiful length really had him going forward and did it carry probably just got to Astle's fingers look at the reaction from Chris Cairns he'd just been hit for two fours he was desperate for that wicket there's that very good slow ball this time Alex Stewart has picked it just fractionally over pitched an idea of uh, the pace of the ball going across the outfield that's when ran for there oh. it's just done enough to go past the outside edge and Missed the off stump by a couple of whiskers. I don't know that I've ever seen on television Atherton say anything to anyone. He kind of says it with his eyes, doesn't she? And a glare, perhaps. Pretty well bowled. Right. Uh, the outfield has been affected by the overnight rain. Very handy three runs. Get it. Roger Toos is uh, the chaser. I'll just have the three. 
Stewart plays that shot very well. There it is. I can guarantee you that the batsman thought that was coming at his throat. It's a beautiful out curve drop or out curve drop style delivery. So it might have been inside edge on the pad. Now the question for the OBW here is um, if he's not playing a shot, then that's one part of it that comes in. Is he outside the line of off stump? Doesn't look so there. Is it a bit high? up for England just the loss of uh, Mark Butcher <laughs> little thin edge it is too Stewart has gone this time Dion Nash has done it what? talk about the footwork it was a little bit uh, devoid there of any action that is the reason that he went fishing Alex Stewart and he caught enough go for 23 it's 54 for two Graham Thorpe is taking guard ah! Very decent appeal may not have swung back quite enough Dion Nash has uh, probably said to someone behind the wicket what was wrong with that perhaps saying uh, well you didn't give me too much support maybe from behind Swing. Whether uh, there might have been a little thin edge on that or what happened, but goodness me, it would have been close if not. Well, it's a muffled appeal. Mark suggests to me there was two sounds inside edge on the pad. Very, very close. Great umpire, David Shepherd. And after that little drama came the rain, and when it came, it really came, I'm like uh, afraid to say so much so, that one of the ground staff here at Old Trafford got stuck under the covers well, that was disappointing because there was quite a long delay then 56 for two England at the time Thorpe having problems unbeaten with just a single Atherton had fought to goodness he really had uh, not out 11 at that stage the New Zealand bowlers uh, a wicket each for Cairns and Nash who really have been uh, hugely impressive both at Lords and here again at Old Trafford they gave England absolutely nothing, really nothing short and nothing for Atherton off his legs either. So credit to them. We'll take a break and uh, see you back here. 29 overs were lost. That was uh, disappointing for what was a reasonable crowd. I'd say just over half full at uh, Old Trafford. We'll pick up play with a score still at 56 for two when the players came back onto the field. It's Dion Nash bowling to Graham Thorpe and it's Barry Richards and Richie Benno commentating. And that's an area where New Zealand attack him, and uh, so far they've attacked him successfully. It was off a thickish outside edge. That's beautifully bold. That is a great leg cutter. And uh, it's done for the number two batsman in the England side, Michael Lather, and he played it a lot early on and uh, failed to get a touch. That one was uh, a very, very loud appeal. Perfect delivery, just drew him into the shot. Didn't quite get far enough forward, Mike Atherton, but that's a wonderful delivery from Chris Cairns. He's been looking for that length all the way through. He had Alex Stewart dropped, and now he's got Mike Atherton, so very good bowling, 60 for three. New batsman Graham Hick. What about the slow ball, first ball? Oh, oh did that come off the edge? Uh, they're uncertain as to whether to get a run, and they had to hurry, but Thorpe's there. Well, it didn't touch anything at all. It's just uh, hit the wicket and gone away as it's past the batsman. Nice 
way to get off the mark. feeling when you get a short one and then you don't even bother to run you just tap the pitch down a couple of times and look up at the bowler well it's a struggle out there for Graham Thorpe just looking uh, at the subtle variations of Chris Cairns this is a, a normal speed delivery bowled to Graham Thorpe you can't see much difference in his slower ball in the quick motion, that's his slower ball. But have a look at the difference in the release of the two balls. On the left is the quicker ball, on the right the slower ball, and he just cuts his fingers across the one on the right. And that is the one that is the slower ball, and you can see the tra trajectory of it as well is much, much higher. That's well, ball. that's that same delivery that almost got through Hick uh, in the last over just got the inside edge and jagged back onto the pad that's one that's pushed in from outside off stump very good change of pace just up the pace a little bit you see how late Hick is on this ball He's saving grace as he plays it right underneath his eyes and that's uh, a good lesson for anybody uh, 83 Could be going down leg side. There's not much in it. Just. Give you a look at the red zone of uh, that delivery. It's pitched well outside off stump. With the angle probably just going down the leg side. There's just an element of doubt for the umpire. It was a good effort down there, but still went for four. Here's Chris Cairns. It's the second or third time he's tried the slower ball. It deceived Thorpe at Lord, did him all ends up. And Thorpe looked so mighty pleased with himself when he deals with it, as well he might. On each occasion, it's been right on target. It's the skill from the bowler, it's been well counted. Lovely stroke. One positive movement to the ball and then a swing of a straight bat through its line. That's why that worked. He didn't uh, walk after the ball as he's tended to do at times in this innings. <laughs> Clever bowling. Got him. He's a very tall man, Graham Hick, and he gets himself in all sorts of bother here with his footwork. He looks to go forward, then he goes nowhere. It's angling down leg side, I've got to say. It hit him on the full, it hit him on the back leg. They were the determining features for Russell Tiffin. It's 83 for four. Mark Rambrakesh arrives at the crease for England, with England uh, in some trouble. A delicate stroke. Probably saved from crossing the boundary rope by Roger Toot. Well, that's what you want if uh, you haven't been in particularly good form. Something round about leg stump. Really? Oh, nice. good example of Graham Thorpe being very watchful eyes on the ball well, that's uh, quite a neat stroke very much intended and once again the single run save there 
with the slide and the gathering in. Oh, now, that'll be an interesting one for Russell B. Tiffin. Didn't appear to be too interested, Mr. Russell Tiffin. We just had the feeling that Stephen Fleming might have had a case here. Indeed. I'd suggest that um, our initial thought with the naked eye might have been correct that it was uh, off pad and then onto the front of the glove. And uh, it's no wonder Fleming was mildly excited out there. Well, Perot is asking for a catch, but I think it either missed completely or it might have flicked the pad on the way through. It took it away a long way down the leg side. And moved. A lot of flight on this delivery. Graham Thorpe's just caught in two minds, looking to come down the wicket initially just to push it through the mid wicket area. up for England. Yep. That's a long chase, should be three. And once again, that very good slide has kept them down to two. Now that ball's gone within 20 yards of the boundary. A big shout here, a huge shout. Thorpe's on his way. Short leg has come into play. Young Matthew Bell, he's got the safe pair of hands, and Vittori has broken through. He's given the ball plenty of air, and this one just turning back in to Graham Thorpe. He squeezes it onto his pad. It's gone quite quickly to Matthew Bell. Uh, never easy at short leg. The fingers raised, and uh, that's very bad news for England. Graham Thorpe's gone for 27. England now 104 for five. The appearance at uh, Old Trafford of Dean Headley. Oh, oh, but sneaks through on this occasion. It's the thing you'd have to say about the New Zealand bowling attack today, and at Lords, I guess, to a certain extent, is that new bowlers have been right on the mark. There's been no loosening up. There's been no, here, yeah, have a half volley or a full toss to get yourself settled. They've been testing. Yeah, nice, Dan. Little fumble here, and they'll get back for two. Only one more run was added before the close of play at seven o'clock, 100 and eight for five. England, Mark Rambrakesh unbeaten with 12, Dean Headley unbeaten with uh, a single. Nobody really got going, though uh, plenty of England players fought hard today. Two wickets for Chris Cairns, two for Dion Nash. They bowled excellently and a wicket there for Daniel Vittori, who was very tidy. He really is uh, an improving bowler. After play, Simon Hughes... Class, but Jim Laker was the best uh, I ever saw.